Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video I was so eager to make for you guys. I am sure many of you have seen these panels being extended during landing and maybe during flight. We'll be looking at the different types of these panels and what the Space Shuttle and the Bugatti Veyron have to got to do with it. So this video is packed with great information, so let's get started. One, two, three. Kennedy Ground, once you write shortened, taxi right alpha, hold short of November. If you've been sitting in a window seat close to the wings, I'm sure you have seen these panels being extended just after the plane has touched down. What you see here are the flight control spoilers. Well, to be exact, at this moment they act as the ground spoilers, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the flight control spoilers have three different purposes we're going to have to look at to get a better understanding. On most jet airliners, the flight control spoilers are operated hydraulically as the aerodynamic loads onto these spoilers can be very high, plus most of the planes have more than one hydraulic system backing each other up in case one of them fails. So we'll take my beloved A320 as an example today. If we look at the wing from a top perspective, you see the ailerons close to the wingtip on either side, which act as the primary flight controls rolling the plane along its longitudinal axis. Now, for your interest, each aileron is operated by two hydraulic actuators, one powered by the blue and one by the green hydraulic system, making the system very redundant in case one of the system fails. Next to the ailerons, you see these panels. Those are the flight control spoilers acting as a secondary flight control surface, which can be deployed manually by the pilot or under given circumstances they extend automatically. Each flight control panel is operated by one hydraulic actuator and each hydraulic system is taking care of at least one spoiler panel on each side. So if one system fails, the matching spoiler on the other side of the wing will fail as well to avoid an asymmetry. But you get my point about redundancy, right? Now bear with me because we're going into a little aerodynamics lesson right here. Now, so let's say we were to be flying at high speed and you want to make a turn to the left. So the aileron on the right hand wing will go down, increasing the lift as the wing camber now just got longer, similar to the flaps operation. And at the same time, the aileron on the left hand wing goes up, decreasing lift. Now picture this cardboard as the upgoing wing. Now, as I said, we're flying at high speeds, only minor deflection in the aileron will cause a lot of stress on the wing, creating this nasty twisting and bending moment. As now there's more lift generated just at this part of the wing, this will go up first, right? So bend the wing. Now to counteract that, planes with larger wingspans, such as the Boeing 777, for example, have inboard ailerons, which are used during high speed to reduce the stress on the wing. And for low speeds, the outboard ailerons are used or a combination of both. Now in this video here, you can see the outboard ailerons are barely deflecting compared to the inboard ailerons. This is all great to know, Joe, but what about the flight control spoilers? <laughs> so here we are again, and we are in a left hand roll or turn. So the right hand wing goes up, the left hand wing goes down, but in actual fact, the plane has the tendency to do this, meaning the nose points to the right, so it's an opposite yaw moment. But at the same time, it is rolling. So you get this left turn, but it's sort of a smearing, shearing turn. <laughs> so better known as the adverse aileron yaw. Now to counteract this adverse yaw moment, you could just increase the drag on the down going wing. And that's where the flight control spoilers come to action. So by increasing the drag on the down going wing, the yawing moment is reduced and the rolling moment is increased. And that's one of the reasons why smaller Cessnas, etc., have to use the rudder to do a control turn as they don't have roll spoilers. Now to sum up, one or more spoiler panels will deflect in harmony with the aileron on the associated wing to enhance roll authority and response. I admit it needs some time to understand all of this, not even to mention the induced and parasite drag, etc. But I'll be very happy to do a very detailed video about this topic, including even the drooped ailerons and much, much more. I'll post a comment about it, and if that gets at least 2,000 thumbs up, I'll be very happy to create that video for you guys. Does that sound like a plan? 
<laughs> now the second purpose is the speed brake function. Now you've all tested the speed brake function as a kid. Remember when sitting in your parents car and you were holding out your hand out of the window and you did that. You tilted your hand and the passing air pushed your hand rearwards. Now your hand acted as a speed brake. Well it didn't really slow down your dad's car but imagine using a much larger surface. So if you move the speed brake control lever in the cockpit it creates that tilting moment you do with your hand and it deflects the spoilers 2, 3 and 4. Once you extend the speed brakes they create drag and decrease the lift over the wings. This automatically will lead to a pitch down momentum so you will pull back on the side stick or yoke and therefore reduces the speed. Now by far this is the best way to quickly kill speed during level flight. And you will feel and hear that as a pilot or passenger as the deflection causes the air to become very turbulent and passes over the horizontal stabilizer which will start to shake the plane as if you were flying through minor turbulence. Besides that it creates this really cool howling sound. I always have to smile about noise abatement procedures airports have put in place due to sensitive residential areas. If I extend the speed brakes it is as loud as if I would be hurtling by with 300 knots. <laughs> now just to get back to the rolling purpose of the flight control spoilers, let's say you were to be in a turn and would have to extend the speed brakes for whatever reason. The spoiler elevator computer will give the roll function higher priority over the speed brake function and deflect the spoilers accordingly. So the speed brakes are a fantastic help to reduce the airplane's speed or increase the vertical speed during descent and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Just to point out a few really cool ones. This tiny one right here is an add-on you can have installed on a Mooney, works fully electrical and doubles the airplane's drag and descent rate. Also most military jets come with a distinctive speed brake or as they call it an air brake system. Here you see the massive air brake on an F-15 slowing her down just prior to touchdown. And this is what a speed brake can look like on an F-16. And this is one of the more extraordinary ones mounted on the tail cone of the British Aerospace Avro 146. Pilots told me it's very effective but it definitely has a weird look to it. But even cooler is the speed brake on the Space Shuttle Discovery. If you closely monitor the tail fin rudder you can see it is split in half and extends to either side. If that ain't cool I don't know what is. Now the third and most noticeable action of the flight control spoilers is the ground spoiler function. As the plane comes in for landing and touches down all spoiler panels are extended to their maximum angle and by the way this is the only time spoiler number one on the Airbus A320 actually gets to work. It has only a ground spoiler function. So the primary purpose of the ground spoilers is to maximize the wheel brake efficiency by dumping the lift generated over the wing and at the same time forcing and pressing the full weight of the aircraft onto the landing gear. And to come back to our hand outside of the car scenario, it also helps slowing down the aircraft by creating aerodynamic drag. Very similar to the air brake on the Bugatti Veyron. It pushes the weight of the car towards the ground so that the rear brakes become more effective and adds aerodynamic drag. Now depending upon aircraft type, the ground spoiler extension works fully automatic in most planes nowadays. Now deployment is most often triggered by weight on wheels and the throttle lever position in idle or reverse a door opening. Other aircraft may require the pilot to manually select the ground spoilers after landing but they have become a very rare sight. Now doing the research for this video I couldn't find a single plane where you need to extend them manually but they're still out there so please comment below if you actually fly such a plane. I remember playing around with the ground spoilers at Stuttgart airport. As runway 25 has an uphill slope we very often didn't even use the auto brake function nor reverses and just coasted uphill. And then we disarmed the ground spoilers a few seconds after touchdown and you could literally feel the plane being sort of let loose and always reach taxi speed at the last exit. <laughs> That was a lot of fun and we saved a lot of brake wear and fuel. So the next time you see the speed brakes being deployed, 
Think about your hand being in an airstream as you hold it out of the window in your car. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. To become my wingman, hit that subscribe button right here and the notification bell so you won't miss out upcoming videos. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. See you next week. All the best, your Captain Joe.